after studying this module you shall be able to know about the concept of business finance learn about various financial needs of a business understand the classification of funds introduction business activities are concerned with mainly two kinds of activities namely production of goods and services and distribution of goods and services so that it can satisfy the needs of the society here comes the need of finance that is the money required to carry business activities business are often called as investment agencies or sometimes intermediaries their main role is to raise funds from the public and from other investors the initial capital brought in by the entrepreneur is not always sufficient to fulfill the financial requirement of a firm so a large proportion of money is invested by the owners or shareholders of the business and rest is taken from long term lenders and some short term finance are provided by the banks in the form of overdraft financial institutions and other business that are prepared to supply goods and services on credit that is trade payables or trade creditors are also considered as a good direct indirect source of raising money the fund requirement is a basic need of every business for its proper functioning a clear assessment of financial needs and the identification of various sources of finance therefore is a significant aspect of running a business organization the money obtained from various sources is invested in real assets such as machinery land and building plant and inventories and in financial assets like making loans to and buying shares in according to the wheeler business finance is that business activity which concerns with the acquisition and conversion of capital funds in meeting financial needs and overall objectives of business enterprise according to the gutumen and dogel business finance can broadly be defined as the activity concerned with planning raising controlling administering of the funds used in the business in the words of parter and wert business finance deals primarily with raising administering and dispersing funds by privately owned business units operating in non financial fields of industry now we will consider categories of financial needs finance and investment decision are very important decisions 
that significantly affect the success or failure of business activities. The reason for this are such decisions involve financial amounts that are considered important from business perspective. When financial decisions are made, it is difficult to revert them. So, the business is typically committed in the long term to a particular type of finance or to a particular investment. Since all decisions are taken in context of future that is uncertain, so there exists risk in all business decisions. Financial needs of a business can be divided into following categories. First is fixed capital requirement. Fixed capital requirement refers to the requirement of funds that are to be used to purchase fixed or durable assets like land and building, plant and machinery, and furnitures and fixtures are also known as fixed capital or long-term capital. The funds required in these assets remain invested in business for a long duration. These assets continue to generate income and profits over an extended period of time. Amount of fixed capital requirement varies with the size and scale of business operations. For example, manufacturing activities require large investments in plant, machinery, warehouses and others, while trading concerns need relatively lesser investment in such assets. Second is working capital requirement. Some funds are needed to meet day-to-day -day expenses of business or for short-term assets or current assets like stock of material and for meeting current expenses is known as working capital. For example, purchase of raw material, payment of wages and salaries, rent, fuel, electricity and water, repairs and maintenance of machinery, advertising, etc. Besides, sale of goods on credit leads to the holding of debtors, balance and bills receivable, which may also be regarded as current assets. The requirement of finance for all these purposes arises at short intervals. Working capital is also known as circulating capital or revolving capital because funds invested in such assets are continuously recovered through realization of cash and again reinvested in current assets. The amount of working capital required varies from one business concern to another, depending on various factors like nature of the business, the time required for completing the manufacturing process, and the terms on which materials are purchased and goods sold. For example, trading companies require more working capital than manufacturing companies. Amount invested in fixed capital requirement and working capital requirement increases as the firm grows and expands its business operations. Sometimes in between the need of additional funds are generated to upgrade existing technology employed so that the cost of production or operations can be reduced. Similarly, larger funds may be required for increasing inventories. 
it is therefore important to evaluate the pros and cons of different sources from where funds can be raised to meet the business requirements. Classification of sources of funds On the basis of period First, we will consider capital requirement of the business on the basis of period of their use in business. It includes long-term capital, short-term capital, and medium-term capital. First is long-term capital. When capital is required for a longer period, it includes funds requirement for five or more than five years. It is used to finance fixed assets as well as permanent part of working capital. The important sources of long-term capital finance are first issue of equity and preferentials, next issue of debentures, next loans for financial institutions, next loan for banks, and last reinvestment of profits. Second is short-term capital. When capital requirement is for a shorter period, that is less than a year, it is most common for financing the current assets such as accounts receivables and inventories and meeting day-to-day -day expenses. The important sources of short-term capital finance are banks, trade credit, factoring, investment credit, commercial paper. Third is medium term capital. Medium term capital includes funds required for a period of two to three, five years. It involves financing some of the activities like renovation of buildings, modernization of machinery, heavy expenditure on advertising, etc. The important sources of medium term finance are first, issue of shares, second, issue of debentures, third, borrowing from banks and other financial institutions, fourth, reinvestment of profits, fifth, public deposits, and sixth, lease financing. Now we will consider capital requirement of the business on the basis of ownership. It includes ownership capital and borrowed capital. First is ownership capital. Ownership capital is the amount of capital invested in a business by its owners who by investing the money become entitled to the profits of the business. In case of sole proprietorship, the individual owner normally invests capital from his own savings whereas in partnership firm, each partner contributes capital as mutually agreed among partners. While in case of companies, capital is raised by issuing shares. The investors who contribute towards the share capital of a company share as shareholders who become its owners by virtue of their shareholdings in the company. The rate of return on owner's investment depend on the level of profits earned and are entitled to receive dividend out of these profits. The owner's capital remains invested in the business for a longer duration and is not required to be refunded during the life period of the business. Such capital forms the basis on which owners acquire their right of control of management. Second is borrowed capital. Borrowed funds, on the other hand, refer to the funds raised through loans or borrowings. Borrowed money involves a fixed obligation to pay interest and repay the principal amount as and when due. In a sole proprietary business, the proprietor can borrow money on his personal security or 
on the security of his existing assets. Whereas a partnership firm can raise loans on the personal security of the individual partners. While in case of companies, money can also be borrowed either by issuing debentures or bonds or raise direct loans. Money may be borrowed for short term and long term, that is to finance fixed assets as well as current assets. A fixed rate of interest is paid by the borrowers and such funds. At times, it puts a lot of burden on the business as payment of interest is to be made even when the earnings are low or when losses incurred. Generally, borrowed funds are provided on the security of some fixed assets. Capital requirement of the business on the basis of fund generation. On the basis of generation, the sources of funds can be categorized into two parts, internal sources and external sources. First, we will consider internal sources. Internal sources. When funds are raised from within the organization, that is business, there are majorly five internal sources of finance. First is capital invested by owners, second retained earnings, third sales of unwanted assets, fourth sale of stock, fifth debt collection. Slide 20. First is capital invested by owners. Amount taken out by the owners of the firm from their respective savings. It can be of two types. That is startup capital which is used to setting up the business and additional capital that is used when owners decide to expand business activities. The major advantages of this source is that it does not include interest payment and there is no obligation to repay after a particular time period. The disadvantage is that there is a limit to the amount that can be brought in by the owners. Second is retained earnings. The benefit of retained earnings can be taken only when business activity is going on for more than a year because only then profit earned in one year can be reinvested into the business. The advantages of this are no obligation to repay and no interest payment whereas the disadvantages of this are a new business firm does not have earnings and sometimes amount of earnings is not sufficient to be plugged back. Third is sales of unwanted assets. It includes selling the fixed assets that are not being used from a longer time period and or of no use. It is a good way to raise money from selling the unwanted assets but it is not possible to sell the assets immediately when the need of fund arises. It can be a time consuming process. Fourth is sales of stock. Money raised by selling unsold inventories. It is a quick way of raising money. Moreover, it reduces the cost associated with holding those inventories. Fifth is debt collection. Debt is the amount that the firm is supposed to receive in future for its credit sales and the person who owes the money is known as debtor. 
it does not include any additional cost by raising money through this there is a risk of bankruptcy of the debtor in that case debts are considered as bad debts first we will consider external sources it includes money that is raised from the sources that are outside the business external sources of finance are adding more partners bank overdraft commercial bills mortgage trade credit government grants venture capital lease debenture bonds equity higher purchase and friends and relatives first is adding more partners the money contributed by additional partners can be invested in the business but it dilutes control of the partnership and profits are distributed in many more ways second is bank overdraft bank overdraft gives flexibility to borrow money from a bank to short notice through its check and current account it allows business to overdraw their current account up to a specified maximum limit as agreed between the bank and the business it allows business to have negative value in their account it is considered as a very convenient way but the drawback is that it contains financial risk because of interest payment obligation regardless of the level of profit that the loan could generate third is commercial bills it is a written order of the amount that is required um, along with the guarantee by the business bank it helps in borrowing the money from other firms that have surplus of funds available with them it carries interest payment the money along with interest amount is repaid to a particular person or business on a certain day in the future usually the terms are between 30 to 180 days these bills are considered cheapest form of finance important thing to note is that the bill needs to be reassessed each time it matures fourth is mortgage it is a loan secured on property where the amount is to be repaid in installments over a period of time which is good for budgeting the property assets becomes the security for the repayment of the loan the business again owes the property as and when final payment is done this method is considered as an expensive method compared to buying with cash fifth is straight credit it means taking credit from suppliers typically its duration is 30 days in case of new business credit suppliers will demand some sort of reference either from a bank or from other suppliers sixth is government grants government often encourage the formation of new business and from time to time and from reason to reason help is also offered government grants are usually very small and direct loans are rare because government see loan provision as the job of financial institution in other words these are the financial assistance in the forms of grants given by the government and 
or tax credit for starting up or expanding business. The benefits of getting grants from government is that it does not create liability for the business. The drawbacks of this source include certain conditions applied by the government, for example, location, and all the businesses are not eligible for a grant. Seventh is venture capital. It refers to financing that are provided to early stage, young, and high potential companies. They provide capital to the growth startups businesses in exchange for an ownership share of a business of the company they invest in. They prefer to invest in companies that have received significant equity investment from the founders and are already profitable. They generally prefer businesses that have a competitive advantage or have a strong value proposition in the form of a patent or a very special and protectable idea. Venture capital investors often take a hands-on approach to their investments, requiring representation on the board of directors and sometimes the hiring of managers. Venture capital investors can provide valuable guidance and business advice. A lease is a method of obtaining the use of assets for the business without using debt or equity financing. It is also considered as a legal agreement between two parties that specifies the terms and conditions for the rental use of a tangible resources such as a building and equipment. These are similar to rental agreements. Business lease non-current assets such as a company car, delivery vehicles, equipment and office or factory space in return for payments to the owner. This reduces the cost of acquiring these assets as the business does not have to outlay the full value of the asset in one transaction. Instead, it rents the asset over an agreed period of time. When a business lease an asset, it is agreeing to an ongoing regular payment that allows it to use an asset that is owned by another business. The firm will have an obligation to pay another business and therefore a lease is a type of debt finance. This agreement can provide tax advantages as the lease payments are usually tax deductible. They are not shown in the balance sheet and do not affect the company's gearing. At the end of leasing period, the business may release the item, upgrade the lease for a different or newer term item, or offer to buy the leased item. Usually, at the agreed residual value that was negotiated at the start of the lease. Ninth is debenture. Large established companies can obtain finance by issuing debentures. Finance companies and other large firms are invited to invest in these businesses by lending large amounts of money to the business. These loans are used to buy buildings and equipment and are for a fixed amount, for a fixed time and at a fixed interest rate. Tenth is bonds. Bonds are unsecured notes. Are notes usually issued by finance companies to gain funds? 
they are not secured and do not provide any claim on the assets of the business. Therefore, they offer high interest rates reflecting the greater risk to the investor. The unsecured note issuer is only backed by its creditworthiness and good reputation. The borrower must pay a specified amount of interest, often quarterly or half yearly, and repay the entire amount borrowed on maturity. Interest is often higher than for debentures. Eleventh is equity. Equity financing means sale of a portion of the ownership interest of the business for a financial investment in the business. By this process, capital is raised through the sale of shares in an enterprise. Equity involves a permanent investment by investors in a company and company is not entitled to repay the amount at the later date. Twelfth is higher purchase. Higher purchase method involves making a down payment of certain amount and then regular payments for a specified period of time. In other words, it can be defined as a legal term for a contract in which buyer agrees to pay in parts or a percentage of amount for the goods being purchased over a predetermined time periods or months. Thirteenth is friends and relatives. Sometimes owners prefer to borrow money from their own people, that is, their friends and relatives. It may be in the form of debt where interest charged in lower than being charged in outside market. Let's summarize the discussion we have done so far. First, fund requirement is a basic need of businesses. Second, finance and investment decisions significantly affect the success or failure of business activities. Third, we also studied that the funds can be classified on the basis of time of their use, on the basis of their ownership and on the basis of generation of funds.